D&D session with Zake and Connor and the rest of the crew. We will be playing 5th edition. There are a couple of disclaimers. Number one, the lore will be tweaked. Uh, I have decided for anybody who knows what it is, Acquisitions Incorporated is canon, uh, specifically the C-Team side quest. Um, there are a couple of rules that we'll be going by. Rule number one, rules are guidelines, not law. Uh, we are not going to be rules lawyering. The players will get the chance to make their case for an action that may or may not be against the rules, uh, as written. Um, and I will be the ultimate arbiter of whether or not I will allow it. There are several homebrew elements to this both to the characters and the items as well as the world so if things seem a little weird sometimes that's why uh rule number two we will be this will be a let's call it um pg 17 i'm not sure what PG that is 17. in actuality but but <laughs> it will be it will be non it will be youtube friendly <clears throat> However, there may be cursing. It's um, be this isn't a YouTube friendly to the extent that the channel is YouTube friendly, basically. Not demonetized, yes. but also not for kids. Hello, Johnny. How's it going? Yes. So we have and we have a chat chatter already. All right, awesome. Uh, welcome, viewers. Um, so uh, this game will be set in Faerun on the Sword Coast. We will be starting in a town called Red Larch. Uh, the basic premise is that the prince of the elemental plane of air, uh, uh, named, uh, uh, give me a minute to, his name is, uh, Gideon bin Bakir al-Balil. Um, he has contracted the party, uh, along with his husband, the water Ganassi Kai, to... Hello to uh, deal with rumors that have been going around in Sigil as well as hushed tones on the material plane that the elemental Lord of Fire has decided to attempt a takeover of the material plane and possibly the inner elemental planes. Um, the characters have arrived in Red Larch and I will allow them to each describe... <coughs> their character's appearance, as well as a brief description of their reasonings. Um, we'll start with Kiyu. Go ahead. So, I am Zmei. I am a lizard folk ranger. I am a bounty hunter and came to this town in search for new bounties and just for hunting. All right, uh, Skywolf, go ahead. What is your what is your character's name and ba brief background, please? My character's name is Kai Calder. Um, I'm a water Ganassi. Um, I've got um, kind of shorter than usual stature, but still relatively athletic. Uh, Fin-like ears and a little tiny fin on the top of my head, right in the middle of my hair. My hair is short and dark green, um, looks almost like grass. My skin is bluish green. So my background is, you know, me and Gideon have been together a while, as far as you can tell. You know, we're still going to flush that out a little bit. Um, and like he said, we were concerned, you know, we represent kind of the interest of multiple realms that are going to be impacted by this. And so we, you know, decided together that we should put together a party to deal with it. All right, Guardian, go ahead and describe your character. My character is um, Alu... Alu Butcher of Nightvale. He is a six foot three person of elven origin with wearing decently baggy pants with 
bandages that cover from the base of his fingers to his elbows on both arms and and uh, leg warmers that don't cover the um, the heel and front part of his foot that cover all the way to his knee and wearing a poncho made of a werewolf's pelt. <laughs> he carries yellow, goldish eyes with a sl slit golden eyes with long black hair with white bangs in the front with long white bangs in the front. Um go ahead Zake with your character and design. Uh I do have several images I will share in the dice roll for players who do have art of their characters or, or at least rough approximations therein i will send them in a minute so that the rest of the youtube viewers may gaze upon them mm -hmm. so my character is bolga an orc barbarian yes and he's a gladiator background he is just well you're a very muscular giga chad orc with a loincloth <laughs> that's it and um, his ideal is food. He likes food. He wants to eat everything. His bond used to be his human friend, which he ate. And he rages at trivial things. Obviously, he's chaotic neutral. Um, because he doesn't know what he, he's even doing. Um, but I don't know, like, he's kind of balding. He's You're kinda... saying that he doesn't have the intelligence to... Or the capacity for evil. He doesn't have the. He's so stupid that it's evil. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, okay. So, being posted in Dice Roller, you guys will see it on YouTube in a minute. Um, is artwork of several of the characters. Uh, we've got nice. The, We've got the Dampier there with uh, the the brown and platinum hair. Uh, Gideon is the one with the glasses. <clears throat> uh, we've got our lizard folk, uh, Zmi, right here. Uh, the armor does not entirely is reflect the character. Um, we have a half Owlkin, half Erganassi who will be joining us next week. However, they were unable to make it for the opening session. <clears throat> And the Iguanodon is the mount for Zmi. He decided that he was going to use his starting funds for a mount, which his is perfectly is acceptable. Iggy. So out of character. Yes, his name is this... Iggy the Iguanodon. But this is a Argonian riding a guar. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh... Also, I do note the hair on mine is meant to be black. I believe the person who the person I had drew it that I had got to drew it did me, uh, make it black. It just looks brown due to the lighting. Ah, thank you for the clarification. Yeah, because it is meant to be a um, obsidian like black. I also forgot to mention that my character is a bard. Oh, oh yeah. I also forgot to mention my character is a uh, monk fighter. I am not forgot to mention, but I am a ranger. And the GMPC is a druid, Circle of the Star. <clears throat> All right, now that character introductions are done, let's get right into it. You guys are in a small, sleepy town. Uh, they are currently rebuilding. Uh, they look like they have gotten quite a bit of foot traffic recently and are expanding. Uh, the city is surrounded by a forest uh, made of red larches, thus the name Red Larch. Mm, can we... I wonder if I, we can generate an image just for... Like, so this is just D&D, &D, so we just, like, do this for fun. We're not going to sell these images or anything. So I was thinking maybe we could, like, use a meta or something to generate the generate the stuff. Because I do have some subscriptions. What do you think? Uh I don't have a moral quandary with using such a system. Um, I know that other people do. I really don't care. Uh, Chat, uh, I mean, the group, what do you guys think? 
for just um, using it for D and D. So, yeah, if, you, if you want to, I mean, it's your channel. Um, I do know that there are already a fair amount of of bits of art, but you know, if it's it's up to you. All right. I agree with Sky. All right, we won't use it until we uh, need to, unless it's like, and uh, affecting the. Okay, well, well let, let's continue. Oh, no. All right. <clears throat> you are in front of an inn. This inn is named the Drawn and Courtier. Nearby, almost attached to the inn, but specifically not, uh, is a an eatery. Uh, on the uh, above the door, the entrance, there is a wooden cutout of a bronze dragonborn with a chef's outfit, a frying pan, and a large grin. The name of the uh, establishment is Big Daddy Dinar's Yum Yum Hut. It looks to be quite popular. So who's uh, wait? Is my character there or not yet? Yes, you are all at. You are all meeting at the the drawn and courtier near Big Daddy Dinar's Yum Yum Hut. Yes, that is an image. Uh, pretty much that. Yes. Who <laughs> made this? Um, nice. Do note. Do note that this image is uh, odd for those of you who are used to the mortal. I mean, the material plane, as Dragonborn do not normally have tails, uh, yet this one does. That is oh, of note. It says, my character, it says yum yum. Food? It sure does. You can read? No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh. I, actually, can I read, Connor? <laughs> can I try to read this at least? That's up to you. It's your character. No, I'm. I'm literally. I literally have to roll the dice to <laughs> read. I'm actually that um, stupid oh. that I might not be able to. That's funny as hell. Let me see. Uh oh. Um, yeah. With your intelligence, I'm gonna go ahead and say no. You do not know how to read. Can I at least attempt to discern what it is? You may attempt with a. Let me see what skill this would. Be. What skill is reading? Um, can we reasonably assume that he can? He knows the picture, and that he can see. Yeah, he food? can. He can see the picture, but he can't read it. Uh, let me see what. I guess I roll me a. Oh, roll me. Roll me an insight. Roll me an insight. So roll d uh, slash roll, and then what do I need to put for d twenty, or how do I write d twenty? Yes, you roll you uh, slash roll one d twenty, and then uh, minus or plus your modifier, which is probably a minus. Yes, let me this check. Is a, let me see. Yeah, it's a minus one. So one d twenty minus one. Minus one. Okay. It says wrong arguments. Okay, hold on. Let's try again. Roll. Okay, one D twenty. Yeah, it should work. Yeah. Minus oh, that's you. One. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's not working for me for some reason. All right. Well, we'll figure out. We'll figure that out later. For right now, I'll just re-roll. This is going to be the official roll for now. Let me wait. Let me see on the screen if you're Here. writing it correctly. Hold on, Zig, hold on. Let the stream catch click up. Click the plus button, and you can click use apps, and then click the the. Okay, I think I figured it out. Hold on. Uh, it's uh, roll. Finally, I I know what what I was doing wrong. I was putting spaces. One D twenty minus one. There yep, we there go. You go. There you go. Wow! All oh, right, wow. first you roll of the session. Nat twenty. Let's go. You yes, you can read this. 
you yep. uh, you are able to parse out the pronunciation and with the with the symbol there of the dragonborn with a dish in its hand and an apron on, you can reasonably assume what it says. You yum may not yum. know what Big Daddy Dinar means, but you do know what Yum Yum means, and it is a food establishment. Yum Yum! Yum Yum! Yum Yum! yum. Okay, um, yum. my character literally just, like, barges in and yells, like, in the middle of the inn. Yum Yum! Give me food! Now! I guess this orc is hungry. You guess? All right, well, please lead the party. Where where do you guys want to go? You go you're going to go to the Yum Yum Hut first. I'm in the Yum Yum um, Hut, personally. You you are in the Yum Yum Hut. Okay, noted. <laughs> with the um, with us being hired for this job, are we meant to meet at a specific location? Um. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to speak up and say. Um, we're supposed to be going kind of the other part of the building, but, you know, I'm... I feel like I shouldn't try to stop him. I don't think we can either way. Yeah, I think he's lost a bit of... I think someone knocked get the brain cells out of his head. Mm -hmm. Well... Uh, yeah, well, let's move on then. Let me come on. Alright, you enter... Run. So you're entering the Yum Yum Hut, I assume? Following yeah. the barbarian? You're following our friends. Will, yeah. yes. Or, uh, more, um, out of character, more like preventing uh, the orc friends from oh, doing please. something stupid. Yeah, the accent's kicked in. <laughs> I, I'm not going to try. Is there an I innkeeper? Mean... Um, You're in the Yum Yum Hut, so no. <clears throat> there is a person taking orders. I am going to intimidate this person to give me all the orders. All of them. D this is about to turn into Waffle House. Really? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Uh, you walk up to the counter. There is a copper dragonborn that turns to you, and she begins to say, Ah, yes, can I take your order? Mm, I take everything. Might I suggest the tombs... I'm sorry, everything? So you, you want one of everything? Yes. All right. Um, that uh, she starts looking through the menu and like starts writing it down, and she's like, "Okay, that'll uh, that'll be about uh, forty-eight gold." I don't for intimidation, and I say that will be free. My character, can I do something real quick? Of course, please. Since it's just forty-eight gold, my character is just not wanting problems. Most because he's bored right now and he doesn't feel like to fight any town guard. And he just wants to Honor, get, I am... start this job. So he's just going to walk over and put 48 gold on the table. Ooh, thank you. Yeah, exactly. You friend. <laughs> well, we don't need, well, we don't need you causing problems for us now, do we? We got a job to do. And I'd rather get paid. All, All right, right, you kind of hand the... Hmm? Did you post a stream in the announcements? Mm. Cool. Yes, good idea. At everyone, I let you do that now. Okay. Anyway, anyway, anyway let's continue. All right. Uh, so you you the the woman takes uh the the forty eight gold and says, "All right, uh, that'll be a bit." Um, you can wait in the inn. Uh, we will bring you your order. Z, she says at the end. <laughs> and she walks to the back. And you can hear, like, a... You can hear a, a gruff voice respond with, One of everything! And you can hear her say, Yeah, yeah, they, they, they paid for it. They're, they're good for it. They already paid. And it's just one of everything. She's like, All right, hey, let them know it'll be about... Uh, Twelve minutes. Twelve minutes. Service. And so what? she she comes back and well they have a they have a kitchen staff of course but 
you know, the, 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 their kitchen staff is now going to be preoccupied for the next 12 minutes on just one order. Uh, one order. So, of, one of everything. Yeah, one of literally everything on the menu. Um, so. And you guys getting some uh, crash course training, huh? Uh, Gideon does speak up and says, well, um, if you are interested in food, I am a highly trained chef myself. Uh, while we are in en route to our destinations, I can definitely cook up something quite nice if we're able to purchase some ingredients. Well, let's practice. just cancel if... our order then. Wait, why cancels orders? I didn't get the. Sorry, what was it? Why did people cancel orders? I believe I... May was saying. Oh, go ahead. Um, can I speak with that woman, Dragonborn? Of yeah, I mean, she returns to her her counter, and uh, you walk up, and she says, "Hello, um, may I take your order? It it will be a bit of a wait, but." Excuse me, ma'am. Can you cancel that order and just uh, bring us two finest pieces of steaks you have? Um, do I, I want hear to cancel, do I, I want do I to cancel all our... Yes, thank you. are standing right there, yes. Do I understand what you're saying? If I... it, yes, you know how to speak common, if but barely. Just just before would... the orc can react, my character walks up to the lizard and then flicks him in the side of the head. <laughs> Goes like, okay, I'm good. sorry, you're not canceling the order I paid for. Okay, good. Get your own meal. <laughs> good, because you know what's going to happen? Do you have any idea I would, how I would it's you... going to cost... This orc will eat a fine steak, and he will calm down. He doesn't need every piece of his... of this... He's a... He's a bloody orc. Why the bloody heck did you think I paid for it? I had the gold. Get down I'm right sure here. they will return your gold. Yes, but it doesn't give you the right to take... Basically, cancel the order I paid for. Heck, I have enough gold to probably pay for everyone's meal. Not everyone in the building, but the ones that are coming with us to the job. It's fine. I have very what little need for gold. And we're what do you paid. think they're gonna do with, with the food we, we didn't eat? They will throw it away. No, when I, I hate it. it is gold. You, you um, underestimate my the, appetite. The woman, the, wo the dragonborn woman behind the counter, uh, coughs a little bit. She says, well, actually, um, we have made a local deal with the governance of the area. Uh, any unused food does indeed go to um, people who are less fortunate. Okay, guys, chat, chat. Episode zero, the crew tries to order lunch. <laughs> yes, and we got the lizard here messing with our missing with our orc barbarian's meal. She says, um, she says, I uh, she says, uh, for the lizard folk, I, I will, um, would you like that, that piece of meat rare? Mm, yes. Mm. Yes, please. All right. And she will go to the back and let them know, hey, there's also, uh, make sure you do a double order of, um, prime, uh, meat, uh, rare, please. And, uh, she will walk back out. By the um, way, out of character, good thing the Guardian stopped my character. I don't I, I like stop the whole situation because you know what happened? If you remember, rages are trivial things. That's not just trivial, that's like prime rage material. <laughs> no, okay, try, anyway. try not to destroy the campaign in episode one, Zake, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, my character is chaotic as well, so he's having to, him having to step up in this situation is annoying. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, so Gideon will in fact uh, walk up to the counter and will ask if he may speak with the chef. Uh, and he slips the woman ten gold and she says, yes, I think that can be arranged. 
He will go to the back and you will hear a vague conversation as he attempts to persuade this chef and succeeds. Uh, and he will walk back out with a couple of sheets of parchment that he rolls up and puts into a scroll case. What did you get there? I figured while we're here, I would ask for the recipes of local cuisine. Um, it appears that they have uh, a pastry called a tombstone pastry. Uh, quite interesting. A bit difficult to make okay. on the go, but I think I can mock something up that's similar. Hmm. Oh, um, also with me character, um, uh, could, just if my character will end up ordering something, it's just, he's just gonna order himself a drink. Um, uh, what kind of drink would you like? Oh, uh, what options are there? Oh, she says, well, we have, we have quite a few red wines, um, not so many whites, unfortunately, uh, the area that we currently are in is, is, uh, quite temperate, um, not really well suited for uh, white wine, but we do have some from import. Uh, of course, we also have um, mead, uh, both in the wine form and the uh, carbonated uh, beverage, if you would like it as a um, beer-like type drink. Uh, we also have, of course, regular beer. Uh, there are some with hops, uh, a couple, a couple of them are infused with uh, fruits from the local, the local uh, flora. Um, quite nice, quite nice. Uh, we also, have, we we do have a new one. Um, it is called the Bee Stinger, named after uh, Grandmother Knight, who who helped save the town and in and indeed the, uh, well, the the majority of the material plane, in fact. Uh, uh, it is a it is a gin and lemon drink with a splash of blackberry. Mm. Like as my character's hearing that, his brain does not r recognize the names of each of the alcohols, but the one that kind of like catches the interest is the word mead. So he's just like, I, I apologies, I God, why did I go into a British accent? I'm trying to do Irish here. <laughs> I mean. I me, I just started getting mad at me. But, um, he goes like, I heard of many of these beverages. Um, just, I could just say, the meat has gotten me attention, so can I have that? Um, yes, what form would you like it in? Uh, uh, bubbly or, or uh, just straight? Yeah, no, both. Both, uh, of course. Um, that will be four gold. And then he puts down the four gold. All right, she will go to the back. Uh, you hear some corks unstopping, uh, some glugging, and uh, she will bring you out a a glass of uh, mead wine. Um, it's quite sweet, um, uh, a little bit thick, more more of a, a mouth feel than wine, um, as well as a tankard, uh, frothy. With uh, this, this drink is more of a dry drink. It's not as sweet, but it's still, you can still taste the tones of honey. Uh, and she will uh, just hand it to you and she will say the rest of your order. Uh, if you'd like to wait in the inn, the drawn in courtier, we will, we will be happy to bring you your meal. Um, please let Profa know that you have ordered a full course so that she may have the table space to accommodate your party. Where's Huma? Where's what? Skuma. My character's kind of just like confused at what the orc is saying, but he's just like, so, uh, Christ, I can't stay in the bloody accent. Me Irish blood is getting me to me. All right. Um, my character's gonna go, um, so where is this lady I can go ask to, for a table? Ah, yes, that would be, uh, Prophetess Drawn, um, the co-owner of the Drawn and Courtier next door. Something tells me she knows we're here already. 
it can it, not uh, not ice. But um, all right, all right. Then he, like he takes his two drinks. He like after he takes the two sips, he's gonna like start moving to the other side, and he just kind of come on, like come on, big fella. We need to go over to the other side so we can wait for our food. All right, I go. All and right. Then he'll go where he'll go in to where the lady is and ask yes. the, to get hit to get the table for everyone. Okay, so you open the doors to the drawn and courtier. It is a nice inn, um, polished wood floors. There is a stage uh, at the north end of the of the drawn and courtier that is set up for bards and musicians, uh, shows and such. Um, there is a counter to the west side, um, <clears throat> and behind it is a very stern-looking woman. Um, she ha she wears a, a breastplate and armor that is well used. Uh, let me just see if I can get you an image... Ba, 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 ba. She is an elf. Uh, uh, here you go. Official art of the character. This is Prophet Estran. Um, Her armor is well worn. There are many dents and dings, scratches and such, but it is still well maintained. You can see that she is polishing one of her pauldrons at the moment. Um... She looks up at your party and kind of sizes you up and grunts. I start, uh, what's it called? Showing up my muscles. Just as a. My character uh, is like, <laughs> my character's kind of quickly standing there drinking like the carbonated drink first to quickly get that done with. <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of quickly like downing it. Nar hate. It. Noted. And I'm just. I'm just gonna and then he quickly like, like, like kind of just like put it in his other hand and go, um, oh, uh, the lady next door said we can uh, to um, to come over here to get our ta to get a table. Ah, yes, yeah, Miss Miss Drizzit, I take it. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, <laughs> she oh. never gave you her name. <laughs> you never asked. That's so, like, he's kind of just like, I, I think he's like still kind of like he's in memory at the moment because he's half worried about the big behind him. Uh, okay. <laughs> she says, she says, yes, uh, yes, she ch she tends to, you know, I didn't actually agree to the deal of all of this, but, you know, it's brought more tourists to the to the town, so I guess that's fine. Uh, yeah, I can clear up a couple of tables. And she, uh, she looks over near the stage and she goes, Hey! Hey! You two! Move your asses! Get another seat! And they just, like, quickly pick up their plates and they move. They don't want to mess with her. Uh, she goes over and arranges the tables so that they're, uh, close together. <clears throat> and, uh, gets you a couple of chairs and... Says, all right. Um, for Karen. Guardian, I have a question. Yeah. How often has Alu drank alcohol? The only alcohol has ever drank is ale, and that was like after after you'd have very glorious victories against certain type of air enemies. Something mm -hmm. akin to the werewolf he fought. Okay, did you drink both the carbonated meat and the regular meat in quick succession? He only what drank the say? carbonated one for... He only drank the carbonated one in quick succession. He's saving the other one for, like, a slow sip. Mm -hmm. Okay, noted. Um, Please roll me a constitution saving throw. Oh. <laughs> eh, fair. But, uh, good thing. Oh, I only have a plus three. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> oh, you it's know not like you're gonna, this... It's not like you're gonna die if you fail the roll. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Yeah, unless you could fail. 17 plus three. <laughs> 20. So, dirty okay, 20. So 20. All right, dirty 20. 
Yeah, you're fine. You, 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 this stuff is strong, but you're able to keep your composure. And so once, um, uh, so once when Allo gets to the table, he does put his the other meat he had down first, and then he goes into his pocket and pulls out his ocarina. Mm -hmm. And he's just kind of starting to clean it out because it's been a bit since he cleaned it out. Hold up, let me see if I can find a photo for what his ocarina looks like. Of Honor, is any is the stage empty currently? Yes. No. Sorry. Forgot. Um you you do enter there is a bard on the on the stage. Um she is a me, hold on. Let me figure out one second. Da 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 da. Da. Yeah, you when you when you I throw something at the bar. Na 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 na. Alright, she is probably a... one of the worst decisions you could make in this situation. Oh, bar. Don't you see before you a dark skinned lady. She is strumming on a war lute. Uh, she has uh, a streak of red hair in her mohawk, and she is playing a very sultry tune. It is quite nice. Uh, she's clearly a professional. Connor, I'm going to leave it up to you. Uh, is my character irritated? You, you know how sometimes you cannot control if you like the music or if you're irritated by it? Is my character irritated by the music? Uh... All right, re party? rest of rest of the party. What would you like him to be? Irritated or soothed? What kind of music think, is it? I think it might depend on what. It, what well, I just mechan mechanically be based on her performance. Um, I mean, yeah, what's she playing? All right, what sure. Is this this artwork. This is amazing. Oh, this is official art of Acquisitions Incorporated. As I said, that is going to... Be... Oh, I forgot to... Yeah, Acquisitions Incorporated and C-Team are, are canonical events in this. Um, <clears throat> it was a. It's quite a popular D&D podcast, so there is official art of most of the characters. All right, cool. Um, okay, so she will roll... So chat says roll... Sooth. Sooth. Chat, sa chat also says Sooth. Okay, why does she roll one? Go ahead. Okay, she rolled. Rest. She rolled quite high. Um, I will give. Uh, if if Chats wants him to be soothed, I will roll a percentile dice. If I get fifty or higher, you are soothed. If I get forty nine or lower, you are agitated. I will <laughs> let you know right now. That is a. Oh. What. Oh no, I don't um, like that. I don't like that noise. Yeah, oh, that's oh. a one. You, uh, out on of a hundred. On a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Double zero we, and a one. So uh are, are we doing spicy rolls? Uh we're gonna do crunchy crits, but other than that, what do you mean by spicy rolls? That's, oh that's what it meant. Yeah. Crunchy crits. Uh, no, crunchy crits, so so to give a quick overview, crunchy crits. Instead of rolling two, instead of rolling double the dice on a crit, you will instead do max damage and then roll again. So let's say you get a crit on uh, a great sword. You will immediately do twelve damage plus your strength, and then you will roll a d twelve as well. <clears throat> that and is they, how we're going yeah. to be handling crits. And to balance that, we also have spectacular failures for D1s. For, for um, uh, Not necessarily spectacular, but yes, there are going to be consequences to rolling nat ones. Thank you, Revan. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Revan is a member, so welcome, Revan Lockhurts. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for being a member. Anyhow. All right, so you do not like this song uh, so, at all. Like, uh, in that case, 
I rage, I come after her and break her loose. Uh, before oh. he rages oh, to soothe him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh my god. god. Can, can I do something? Um, absolutely, please do. Please do. Please yeah. do something. Before he, as my character begins to notice our orc friend beginning to go into a rage, can I use my ocarina to calm him down? <laughs> You, you may attempt to do so. Please roll me a percept, a performance check. Give me one second. Um, I think I found a good photo for what my character's ocarina looks like. I'm going to put it in, yeah, the D&D elements thing. <laughs> yes, that is correct, John O'Malley. I rolled two D10s, one of which was a percentile. The percentile rolled double zero, and the D10 rolled a one. Which is a one out of a hundred. Just, just, I want to make that very clear. Yeah, so I'm very enraged. But no, nope, wrong photo. If he, if if your ocarina actually does a one, that's that's gonna be the. That's not just gonna be. That's not going to end in. I don't think it's gonna end well. Okay, let's continue. Um, I put in D and D element chat. That's what my character's ocarina looks like. It, it when my character does pull it, it look. When people get a look at it, it does look like it's made out of bone. Specifically um, something tooth. <laughs> like, uh, go ahead and, and if anybody has images, post them in the dice rolls since that's where Zake is streaming. I already moved it for you. But from okay. now on, if you have any images you'd like to show the audience, just put it in dice rolls. So Nothing that, uh, inappropriate. If it's inappropriate... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if, yeah, if it's I'm against good. YouTube policy, you will immediately be kicked from the session. Like, just full stop. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be doing that to our audience. That's just mean. <laughs> Alrighty, I, so if, performance plus five. If I, before you roll that, Connor, mm -hmm. I'm gonna. It's it's reasonable that I would have noticed that he's has his ocarina out and he's been polishing it, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try. I'm gonna join in. Does that is that gonna change his role? Or are we both gonna? Um, roll? It could be giving me the help action, which would give me advantage. I mean, if we do I it that way. That, I think that works. You will have a choice. Either um, Alu will have advantage on this roll, or you may both roll a d20 plus your performance, and we will use the higher. It is up to you. <clears throat> All right, I'm um, going to roll independently in that case. Yeah, what is your performance bonus? Plus five. Oh, mine's plus five as well. So it's mechanically the same. Yeah, so... Do you just want to All give right. me advantage? I mean, it. Yeah, you just just get, get just take advantage. Yeah. Jeez. Alrighty. So first roll. That's I mean, seventeen. You can, you can do a plus five, and it'll show up as one roll. Yeah, if I, you just put plus or minus, and then the number. Don't don't put a space. Just one d twenty plus five. It'll roll it as is. Oh, um, yeah, go ahead and roll. Go ahead and roll one more time, just in case you get a nat 20. No. Okay. Um, so, okay, that's a 17. I'm sorry, that is a 22. Uh, so I'm going to say you... Let's see. So, Audra will notice that you both are playing the Ocarina, and she will shift her tune to... Um, be more amenable to what you are playing, effectively adding a second layer to this dual ocarina. Yeah, and the song my character was playing is the Song of Storms. Uh, noted. Because <laughs> uh -oh. that's the only ocarina song my character knows. Because it's a theme song. <laughs> um, no noted. Uh-huh. So, um, the the crowd seem or the uh, the patrons seem quite quite uh, happy with the turn of events. Prophetess, uh, what what is everybody's passive perception? Oh, oh damn, mine's thing. only eleven. What? Well, let me. Oh. My uh, passive perception is sixteen. Wow! Oh, wow! My boy, perceptive as hell. Your boy, I am seven. Well, my boy is... That's a nine, Zeke. That's pretty bad. 
Wow. Yeah, so my character has um for have seventeen wisdom, so of course it's high. Ah, yes, that would uh where did my AC go. So Gideon and Alu both notice that Prophetess, who had uh, walked up and was kind of looming about five feet away with her great hammer drawn, uh, slowly puts it back onto her back and walks back behind the bar. You you have a feeling that had Zake done something, he probably would have been a pancake. Yeah, that's a good yeah. thing my character has good reaction speed. <laughs> Noticing our literal, I guess, I guess this is going to be our chaotic stupid. <laughs> or just, yeah, no, chaotic stupid. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess the one who is also chaotic neutral has to be the Wrangler. <laughs> mm. But, yeah, and, um, well, my character is just like, he is giving, surprisingly, he's, it almost looks like he's do playing the song very well effortlessly, but also giving his all. <laughs> like he's done this a lot, played this song so many times, it's second nature. <laughs> Hello, Brooke. Hello, Uz Uzundo Garcia. How's how are you guys doing? New people here in the chat. Welcome. All right. So where were um, we? <clears throat> Okay, so you guys are playing a tune with Audra. Audra finishes. I don't know if you continue. Is since she's stopping, I'll stop because that means she, our orc friend, is not hearing the music anymore. So he won't try to go into a blood rage. Because right. I, right. I don't want him to start screaming. I would like to rage and start murdering people. Yeah, I was just doing like a backing tune to like make his sound a little better, so I'm going to stop as well. Yes. Uh, so, as a disclaimer, I, I should have mentioned this once more, but this is Morrowind rules, so there will be areas where you guys are just absolutely smashing through goblins like they're thin pieces of paper. There will also be areas that if you go to, you will probably die. Um... So do do keep in mind that just because this is the starting area does not necessarily mean it has easy uh, NPCs and creatures to deal with. Yeah, for the yeah. most part, we're not going to scale things with you. Yeah, we're we're not we're not. Floor. Yeah, I'm not going to be scaling things. Uh, if we, we will be, if, if you're told, hey, don't go there; it's dangerous, and you walk right in, you're, you're probably going to die. Yeah, so do do take warnings seriously. I will give one or two, and if you guys don't heed it, you may die. Out of character, and, uh, that's so, the way that goes. Out of character, just so you know, my next if if uh, this if Boga dies, the next character is going to be uh, a run of the mill average Joe normal character. This is just fun to play in the beginning. Okay, I just started <laughs> looking at the chat, and I'm starting to laugh. Because I'm looking at Johnny O'Malley. <laughs> uh, yes, one of my favorite commenters they are. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so your meals are brought to you. Nobody else ordered anything. So, uh, Zmi, you get a nice piece of steak. It looks like it has not really been cooked. Um, they right. kind of just seared the outside. Uh, they, they kind of, as a dragonborn, she kind of gets it that you're a lizard folk. You probably want your meat as close to living as possible. So it's very rare, like exceedingly rare. There, there are like, there is like a centimeter of brown around the steak. And then the rest of it is just blood red, like That's very sick. chewy, very rare, very good. Quite, quite tasty. Um, and I I ordered two, and I oh you, you did order two. Okay, order apologies. Two. I, I, I thought you meant one more. Is my order okay. here? 
Your order is indeed here. There are I, many dishes. I, I, I started eating everything. Uh, uh, at, at once, almost. All right. Um, there is, that, is that one... Passing... Zalpo. <laughs> Just eating it like completely, like Im almost immediately, like trying to fit as much food in my mouth as possible, and like just like, like going a... wild, like, like okay, like I'm, Goku. I'm... To to an extent, to say, this man going no, no, Saiyan, no. like <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> perhaps uh, like Toriko, okay, maybe. Let, let, no, I don't yeah. know if let anybody let watches to, that let, anime, but let's describe this. I'm eating in a way that it intimidates everyone in the room. Everyone has to roll for intimidation. <laughs> yeah. Um. While that <laughs> while the orc is eat well, or orc friend is eating, my character it, it as my character's looking around the ta the ta uh, the place we're in. Is there like mm -hmm. something like a bounty board or anything like a quests board? Kind of not like in the tavern, but out. I mean, not in the uh, the inn, but outside of the inn. Yes, you did notice a bulletin board. And my character just like. Kind of just keeps that in mind for later, maybe as like a little side quest or a little side thing to do to get some extra coin if needed, especially because of this orc bastard. <laughs> but um, <laughs> my character will just start. Will just begin to slowly slip, sip his um the other bo uh, other uh, his uh, other meat he had, as he'll just start to. If music starts playing up again, he'll take it all in, kind of just relaxing. <laughs> I'm tearing the um, it up. does seem like Audra is done for the night. Um, she bows, uh, puts away her war loot, and uh, crosses to Prophetess, gives her a small kiss, and uh, goes to the back. Um... Uh, the the mead is quite nice. Uh, heavy notes of honey. There's a bit of a fruitiness to it. Um, you can't quite make out what type of fruit, but there is this kind of citrusy undertone. Poison. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, poison. Roll roll me a Constitution saving throw again. Uh, no, I'm just, no. It's uh, it's very good mead. Um. <laughs> the orc is uh you see several of the patrons kind of scooch back a bit okay I've, uh, I've, from I've the orc started. who is at this point just shoving food into his mouth there are crumbs and spittle just going everywhere it is an absolute mess. By the way, I look at the bard and I like when I like eat the steak I eat it in a way that is like I would eat like actual flesh. Um, I'm intimidating her with that. Oh, okay. Please roll an intimidation. All right. Just a joke. Hold on. Uh, roll uh, D twenty. I think it's like minus or plus. Uh, your intimidation oh, is probably quite high. Oh yeah, no, it's not. It's a minus one. Wait, well, yeah, charisma, charisma, is charisma is terrible. Charisma based. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Like Nothing, even with my character, I, I have fucking charisma. I get. I have more than you got. D twenty minus one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't do a very good job. She kind of just right. looks at you and is like. Okay, and kind of just goes to the back. By the way, for the viewers, I wonder if we can, um, what's it called? We can do this. Uh, hold on. So, roll. Okay, intimidation. Slash roll. No, I don't. Roll. What are you trying to do? Um, add the, uh, Rolls D minus D twenty. Right. While Zake is is doing whatever it is he's doing, um, I will answer you, John O'Malley. Uh, the Daedric Prince's full course menus. 
<clears throat> well, I would say that the most obvious to go with would be her scene, who would probably have deer, oh, um, or perhaps so good. probably unicorn meat, knowing her scene. <clears throat> Or maybe um, like crocodile or alligator meat, maybe platypus. Uh, yeah, yeah, very exotic stuff. That's a good idea. Diedrich Mill meal breakdown. Lots of undigested. There'd be meat you wouldn't even uh, know what it is. We've accidentally given Zake another video idea. Don't worry, I'll help you write that one. <laughs> <laughs> the culinary world of the yeah Elder of Scrolls. of the Elder Scrolls cuisines. What what does each false god prefer? Um, Obviously, Chegora prefers everyone in the chat. If you don't know the answers, I'm literally going to ban please. you. I'm not even kidding. I'm going to ban you for 24 hours from the chat oh. uh, if you don't get the answer. What is Chegora's favorite food? Cheese. Uh, well, obviously. But... <laughs> cheese for everyone! Wait, no. Cheese for no one. That can be just as much of a celebration if you don't like cheese. Only if you're lactose intolerant. It, well, yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> but apparently, they got or, or voiced Haskell, the voice actor. Yeah, he, he, he's this. He, did he voice Haskell in Oblivion? Yes. That was Dagoth Ur. Yeah. <laughs> Hot damn! That man is. Wow. Wait, what? Wait, what'd y'all say? No Sorry, way. my brain spaced out for a second. <laughs> the voice actor for Haskell in Oblivion is the same voice actor for Dagoth Ur in Morrowind. That's Wait. crazy. That's a quite Wait, a bit of a vocal range that's right a there. Range. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Haskell? <clears throat> is it the like crazy person you meet that No, Shagoras Chamber Chamberlain. Who is actually uh, really, he's actually like the most reasonable person in there. Well, yeah, he also used to be Sheagorath in a previous Kalpa. You're kidding me. Nope. That is abs. He literally says as much in... Uh, have you not Livering gone Isle. into, like, a, a, a whole Sheagorath, like, deep dive video yet? Um, or not yet, know? no. No, it wasn't a deep dive. Deep dive. It, was, it was a, uh, a, hero, a hero of Kawash deep dive. Now I mean, you might need to do it in would... multiple parts. Hmm, good point. Hmm. Now I'm wondering, what would be the full course meal choice of like someone like Azura or Akatosh? Mm, <laughs> Azura. Now, in my ADHD <laughs> curiosity in full swing, how dare all Azura, of you? Azura, Azura. Probably something fancy. She would probably have something like... Um, like one of those uh, plates that you get at like really fancy I mean, I restaurants where the portions are super itty bitty, but it looks pretty. And they serve it on a person. Okay, now now, <laughs> this, no. raises, now this raises the perfect question: What would be Dagoth Ur's full course meal? Ashams, <laughs> Ashams, <laughs> just Ashams, <laughs> just Ashams. That's no it. Ashams. Yeah, no meat yeah. or anything. Nope, just Ashams. Oh, oh, and of course, dirt. and of course, uh, Dagoth Brandy. Uh, I think, what is it called? Uh, like Sixth House Brandy or something yes, like I that? Think so. Yeah, so Ashams oh. and Sixth House Brandy because that's who he is. Let's not forget uh, Namira. But, um, well, I mean, we all know that Dagoth is a god, so he doesn't even need to eat. So really, his Boy, full sure course meal like is he he his full course pleasure. meal is uh, Wraithguard. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, it's Nerevar. Yeah. Ah, Nerevar, welcome. I have prepared a fine meal for you of ash yams. Uh, did you bring Wraithguard? For I have need of it. For cooking, of course. <laughs> he gets handed. I need an. I need an. Nerevar. I require I, I require a glove to help remove something from an oven. You you don't happen to have something like that on you, do you? <laughs> no, but anyway. Gosh, I, I wish I could reach this upper shelf. I just need, if only my fingers were just like a glove longer. <laughs> just slowly trying to coax it. Anyway, <laughs> this is D&D, not Elder Scrolls. Um, I'll so, show D&D at some point, but no, but... 
Uh, so you guys, uh, you, you, I assume that uh, the barbarian finishes his meal within like three minutes. Emil Pag- uh, Emil Parmigiano, yes. Yes, yes, of course. Signature dish of da- Big Daddy Daddy Nars Yum Yum Hut. Uh, <laughs> Emil Pargiano, par- Parmigiano. Um, so you get finished, and uh, Prophetess walks up to you all, and she says, you you know you're going to have to clean all this up, right? Like, I'm not doing that shit. Um, yes, you are. Uh, my character just like he gives you fingers in front Zake, of face. Zake, I'm gonna need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Mm-hmm. You know, at this point, the orc needs to yeah. around and find out. You know, knowing he's yeah, knowing he's got such a low charisma, you might want to just make him do a persuasion. So it's twenty <laughs> minus. This is a bold move. Persuasion is also charisma. Yeah. Okay, so it's a D20 minus one. 19. Oh my fucking god. That's, I don't want that 20. Alright. So, you are able <laughs> to not be intimidated by this woman too much. But you can feel a wave of fear shiver through your spine as she gives you one of the coldest glares you have ever seen. Do I in your ever life. like? Do I even understand this a cold glare? <laughs> yes. It transcends your stupidity. It, you are aware that if you say one more thing wrong, she will smash you into the ground. You are also aware that she definitely has the capability of doing so. Hmm. Okay. And she just says, you will clean the area. My character's just, like, at this point, just... It's like, all right, all right you fucking orc, you can... You, you're left to your own devices. You need to work, you need to watch, and you need to learn. <laughs> Tidy your shite. I head to the bathroom, because, uh... My character going to sort itself out. <laughs> My character just like he's gonna finish up his drink and just like take like he'll take the cups he had and just go go over back to the diner and um ask if he does need to return the drinks he um the cups uh, that he had his drinks in. Or oh, then... the uh Okay, so we're splitting the party very quickly. Let's move to Alu first. <laughs> um you go over and uh, the Dragonborn woman says, "Oh, how very kind of you! No, no, we have we have uh, we we have employees that go and collect the dishes afterwards, but it is very much appreciated." Oh, all right, because um, the lazy over the other side is uh, making the all clean up his mess, which I. <laughs> oh yes, um, well, yes, I suppose that's to be expected. Um, Cam resumes back to Zake and the party. Zake, your character. So you gonna clean up? No, I just, I just, I just leave. You, you get up and try to leave. Okay, I'm gonna need you to make another wisdom saving throw. All right. Uh, roll. Uh, D twenty minus one. Oh, maybe for saving I have even higher. Hold on, I keep forgetting. Okay, yeah, mine, uh, it's minus one. I, 17. That's not, that's not going to be enough. She turns, she looks at you, and as you leave, she points a figure at you, casts command person. You are now obligated and forced against your will to start cleaning up the area. What is happening Damn. to me? Why am I being responsible? What is this? Yeah, all she says is she points at you and she says clean and you begin to clean. Yes. It's like basically like a dog. For a second he, he, will, goes uh, like a, he goes into like a dog mode for some reason. It's just like some time uh, part of his brain. She will uh <clears throat> she will look at the rest of the party. Uh Judging whether or not you guys are going to be stupid enough to try to oppose her. We will not. 
just my character walking back in seeing that is just like eh. well it seems like the orc just le- just drowned and learned all right i'm just gonna sit back down <laughs> my character's just right. cleaning yes he is in fact while you are cleaning she says well while you're at it why don't you just clean the whole the whole floor here you go and she hands you a mop and walks away, and you are compelled to clean the area. <laughs> Damn. Hey, so, you remember when we were talking about consequences before? What are consequences? <laughs> what is... What is the concept of consequence? Gideon just kind of looks at you all and is slightly regretting his decision to... Uh, call this this barbarian to his to his aid but he's not going to say anything just yet <clears throat> um other than that it is uh the evening if you would like to attempt to get room and board after that fiasco <laughs> yeah sounds. i assume that uh Gideon and I are probably just getting one room for ourselves. Yes. And then the rest of the party can figure out. So what do you guys what are your arrangements, guys? Do you guys care? Do you you get in one room? Do you get separate rooms or does it not matter to you? Alright, discuss that while I BRB for food real quick. My character does not my character does not want to deal with this orc be sleeping in the same room as this orc. So yeah, he's just gonna get his own room. Are you nocturnal? Me? Oh. And I believe he's talking about me. Because uh, my character is just a damp here. So, I, and I'm not familiar with that, but... In, with the race, it does that. not say. It, with the race, it does not say if I don't need if I need to sleep or not. Huh. Which I'm half undead, so if it, doesn't, if it doesn't say that you don't need to sleep, then I feel like we're we're just gonna assume that you do. Still do need you need to sleep, to sleep in coffin? Because like, because <laughs> my character also has like deathless nature which means i don't need to breathe so like does my character also have other functions that he doesn't need i'm gonna say that since you're still governed by like it doesn't it it, nothing says that you get a sleep benefit so i was actually i was actually looking to see if you had if you had like specific conditions where you had to sleep, like if it was needed to be during the day or if there was like a coffin type thing, but it looks specific, like that's specific conditions. Not addressed. Hold up, let me look at the race on the character sheet real quick. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at the whole breakdown right now, and it doesn't it doesn't address sleep, so we're just gonna assume that it's the same as everyone else. Does your character have corpus? That's just not a thing, Jake. This is not Elder Scrolls. Know, My character is not an Ash Damp here. I know. So, I, need, I, need go, I, need, I need to go into Elder Scrolls rehab. You do. Dampiers often arise from encounter f- from encounters with vampires, but I'm Comment. saying I'm I'm gonna say that there's no there's nothing unique about the way you sleep here. Where you're just yeah. gonna you're gonna it doesn't say it, so it, we're just yeah. It just it's just while my character's sleeping, he just looks, he just looks like a corpse. <laughs> um, yeah, because- yes sake, I have returned from having to put my meal back in the oven as it, as it has gotten cold. Let's see. Okay. I might have to eat soon because I don't want to eat. That oh, uh, for uh, Johnny O'Malley, my character is elf. Specifically, he's technically meant to be a dark elf. For this version of the character, ah, I'm but dumb. due to him, yes, but uh, but um, due to him being half vampire, he's just really, really pale. <laughs> for Never being mind. a dark elf, <laughs> well, yeah, because um, the vampire makes you pale, so he's it's hard to tell that he's a dark elf. 
Oh, he's a drow. Oh my lord! I didn't even I didn't even realize. Ah, uh, oh yeah, boy. Yeah, he's just he's just pale as a motherfucker. Okay. Yeah. A drow. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. All right. Noted. Yeah, definitely noted. That's why when I said when I described him of elven origin, because it's hard to tell what type he is due to how pale he is. Right. So, so okay. some people, some people might assume he's just straight up a high elf, mm -hmm. <laughs> or like a wood elf. It's like he's too pale to understand. He, well, no, he's too pale to understand what type of elf he is. But he uh, is uh, he is drow. Noted. That uh, will come up eventually. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Um. All right, so we're gonna take a rest in the in the inn. How much we does didn't... it cost? I do have some money. I do still have money left over, and my character is getting a separate room because t t he's already getting annoyed with this orc. There are four rooms available. I am I am going to take one. <laughs> All right, so Gideon and Kai take uh, the largest room available for the fact that they are two people. <laughs> Above the door, scratched in the post, the head post, is the word Dinar. It is scrawled very, very poorly. <laughs> um... The other three rooms are quite maintained. There is a central area that the rooms open up to that allow you all, all, all of the four rooms to interact between each other in a common area. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, you guys have, have lay, do you lay down and have a sleep? Let me activate the music. It's it says died down. Yes, but I do lie down, have a sleep, and I you know, snore intim intimidatingly. Noted. In your own room. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Uh, the night is uneventful. Uh, you have a peaceful rest, and you awaken in the morning. Um, what time of day? Soundly. Yeah, you sleep rather soundly for a, a homicidal maniac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna say that. You're gonna call him that until my character gets it into combat. <laughs> yeah, well, at least you're not trying to take down like level fifteen paladins. N fair, yeah. We're, n well, no, he, the orc is just chaotic, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, <clears throat> when you guys awaken, you are greeted to breakfast. Here is the, the bread and butter of Red Larch, the tombstone, uh, what are they called? They're, they're, they're pastry, they're called something. One second. I believe it's... You know, I only had one character move up to level 20. The rest of them died. <laughs> well, anyway. It is, <laughs> it, it, it is a tomb... It is called the Tombstone Tart, I guess I'll, I'll call it. I can't remember the official name, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> it's quite good. Um, you see quite a lot of people in the inn this morning. Um, all seem to be enjoying said pastry. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Do I even recognize and it as a pastry or no? Am I too stupid? Yeah, we're I, gonna, I, I would go ahead and familiar. say that you know what a pastry is, yes. Oh, wait, what? what's in front of us? Sorry, I spaced out for a second. Um, it's almost like a... Think of like a large Pop-Tart, but a little puffier, uh, filled with um, a type of jelly, uh, powdered <laughs> sugar on the top, almost like a crepe, but in the shape of a tombstone. So, 
like, are we being given this or like we yes, paying for this it? Is, no, you are not paying for it. It has been given to you, uh, except the bar, except the barbarian. He is going to have to pay for it. <laughs> Suck it. No, okay. I'm and getting this for free. I swear to oh, God, oh. I will pick you up, and I'm going to breathe acid down your throat. I said I'm getting Fuck this me. for free. My character, as soon as he hears that, my character's like, Lord of me fucking God, this orc is going to cause me to have an aneurysm. And he turns to this orc and looks him dead in his eyes. Shut your mouth, or this will get ugly. Am I intimidated by him or no? Uh, Alu, go ahead and roll me an intimidation check. I don't think I would be, but we'll see. No, you know what, Connor? Uh huh. Am I here at the table, like with? Of course. With the, okay. I might just get Tasha's hideous laughter, the orc. You, here's okay. the thing is, I have draconic okay. presence. If I use that, I keep rolling until I succeed. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. That's what draconic presence does. All right. N oh, cool. Noted. Okay. Uh, Hold up, let me recheck if I'm correct on this, because if I remember correctly, that's what it does. <laughs> Hold up. All right, I'm going to speak up. I'm going to be like, we can worry about the payment later. Ah, we have I things see. to address. Um, you use it as a reaction. <clears throat> yeah. Draconic oh, so presence. If you fail a charisma intimidation or charisma persuasion check, you can use your reaction to reroll the check as to tap into the mighty presence of dragons. Once this feature turns into... turn turns a failure into a success you can't use it again until you finish a long rest noted all right go ahead and roll intimidation fuck <clears throat> oh crap wait who are you it doesn't say on save oh uh, uh me okay it's not a it's yeah. not a save it's not a save okay good he's rolling an intimidation check i only all have right, plus two so it. draconic presence is useful Well, it's a good thing you do that. presence. <laughs> All right, go ahead and reroll that. <laughs> and it's until I succeed. So well, no, it's per, way, it's every six seconds because it is uh, a reaction, and you only get one reaction every six seconds. I think you can just press the up arrow on your keyboard, and it'll pull the the same roll up. By the way, wait, wait he, it, if he rolls one, do I rage basically, or what? Well, N no. no. Well, he's gonna re-roll. He's gonna re-roll using his ability. But Wait, no, if he, he gets a now, intimidate you. Right. You, your <laughs> character. You may choose how your character reacts. I will just let you know if your character is intimidated or not. All right. What are you saying? My character turns to is looking you dead in your eyes and goes like. Sit down, shut up, or oh, this will get ugly. All right, roll another one then. Yeah, all right, go ahead, reroll that initiative. Oh, oh. <laughs> Gargonic <laughs> presence, bitch. All right. Um, uh, this is player versus player, so I will give uh, Zake a. I will give him a, um, what do they call it? A contested roll. Zake, you may roll a charisma check, just flat. So a d20 minus one. Okay. Roll d20 minus one. You're lucky I wasn't, per I wasn't, oh, yeah, no, he, intimidation. yeah, no, he, he, he successfully intimidates you. You, you can feel the presence. And as you look at him, the world around you seems to darken, and behind him, what what kind of uh, dragon kin are you? 
My character is not specific dragonkin because my character can access every element that a chromatic dragon can access. Well, who do you feel? You know what? I'll just I'll just dis so behind him appears the illusion almost like he kind of morphs into this this draconic image of a white dragon, stark blue eyes, crisp scales, and. Its maw opens up slightly to release steam from its own, while well, what seems like steam from its mouth rising up. And then just as quickly as this, this, your world has darkened, it snaps back. And before you is standing the dampier staring you in the eye. You are successfully intimidated. Did we saw it? Bull guys afraid. Did you guys see it? No. And I will say, oh. I was about to describe when my character is saying that intimidation, like black lightning was starting to come out of his mouth. Some of the social interactions causing a warrior's rage would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I seen that. I was like, that that it is kind of funny. Just the thing is, what kind of barbarian? A gladiator. No, I mean subclass. Yeah, the subclass is gladiator. Oh, wait, there's an actual subclass based around that? I think so. Yeah. Because, like, it, like, because, um, if it's not, like, Totem of the Bear Rage, you are only, if I'm, it, depending on, because if you're not resistant to any of the damage types I can do, your rage is useless against me. <laughs> I see. Ah. J Jason has cleared it up. Yes, they are officially called Cornerstones. Blend. They're called Cornerstones. Yeah. The pastry that you are, you are having is called a corner so no, um, it is a uh, uh brucavius uh what who's who who are you asking what's which backstory is it or, or are you referring to uh well there will be purple lightning but um that won't come up for a bit yeah, just, like, anytime... The thing is, one of the main elements my character doesn't use unless he's, one, getting really excited or angry. It, he doesn't use lightning all that much, so generally, anytime lightning shows up, it's meant to be kind of like, oh, he getting, he getting serious. <laughs> but, yeah, um... But, yeah, just anytime my character has lightning coming out, it's black. Yeah, I don't no, know. What it noted. Noted. I don't know the background of the barbarian though, like because mine character is lightning, huh? Yes, because yeah. I like because black lightning seems like a cool. Yeah, concept. Uh, the backstory of the barbarian is that he he was they mean with wild orcs. Is he it friended a human that he also ate? So yeah. yeah is no, it no. um? Is it visible to everyone when you when you start when this when this lightning starts crackling in your mouth? It, yeah, it's more of just like it's like a natural reaction to him getting angry. So Get so like, is there like actual physical lightning coming out of his? It's not like shooting out of his mouth, right? right. No, but it's sparking in his mouth. Yeah, it is visible. You like, watch as Gideon kind of does a movement. And out of your mouth, an orb of black lightning appears and floats towards his palm. And he studies it. And um, he moves his hand around, and as he does, the lightning kind of shifts. And then he moves it back, and it shifts. And it's almost like this lightning that he's holding to you guys, it almost looks like a hole into the void. Imagine if you saw a 3D object that was 2D. You, you, as he turns it, it doesn't look like it's moving. It looks as if it has been like that. It's a hole into the universe. Uh, uh, okay, Gu yeah, guys, have you ever seen something painted with like that? Like, that uh, black, black three point like, yeah, like the black three point or anything like that, where it yeah, looks I mean, like that... a silhouette from all angles. Yeah, so I get like what that kind of thing. As he as he looks at this lightning, you can see his eyes start glowing purple, and and around him starts crackling lightning of his own, but it is a, a deep purple. And he says, how very interesting. And he lifts his hand back up, and the lightning goes back into your mouth harmlessly. 
And my character's just like... He's like kind of looking at his hands right now. He's like, like weirded out. Kind of like, huh? What the fuck? Because yeah, he, he didn't says realize. nothing else. He just says, yes, interesting. And... Because he doesn't, he didn't realize the lightning was starting to shoot out, like starting to form in his mouth. So just suddenly seeing an orb of lightning come out of his mouth kind of freaked him out for a second. As I imagine it would anyone. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> I am afraid of this thing. I will note that you have a black light. Do you have. Is there a set reason it is black? It hasn't any. Someone nothing says, has been demined. Do an arcana roll. Okay, I will go ahead if you are okay and write a little bit of my own reason why you have black lightning. That will come up later in the story. Um, <clears throat> all right with it? Is like, I'm all right with it. I don't mind. Because like each the each of his different elements are a different color than they would be. Like his when he uses poison, it's red poison. Mm. Like it's red colored. It's like if he uses fire, it's it's white fire. But mm -hmm. like when he uses ice, it's a more of a deep blue. If he uses mm -hmm. acid, it's strangely like radioactive green. Not radioactive green. Um, let's do more dark moss green. Hmm. My character's name is Alu, short for Alu card, because Helsing Ultimate Abridge reference. <laughs> <laughs> Chorus. The Honestly, I've seen both the original Helsing and and the Helsing Ova and the Helsing Abridged. And I gotta Helsing say, the Helsing Abridged beats it all. It is the best. It really is. Absolutely. That anyway. Voice actors. Uh, okay, let's not get on a tangent, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, like anyway, uh, so you guys eat your meal in relative peace after that uh, potential party wipe. Um, it is about, I would say about uh, nine in the morning. Uh, the town is just opening up all of its shops. Uh, where would you like to start this this little this little uh? Foray. I'm gonna stand up and clear my throat once I notice that most people have finished eating. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak up and say, well, rather than the informal introduction we gave Profa, I think we should probably talk to her about our actual goals before we head into the rest of town. What are goals? Well, no, literally. What what are goals like? What what's the? Oh right, right. I remember. Um, if uh, let me can may I say something real quick because um, Brookie is asking me if I could do a um, Arcana trek to try to understand my our uh why my uh, what happened with my lightning. It, but um, I literally have plus zero to Arcana rolls. I yeah, mean, you're allowed to roll. Pretty much anything you'd like. We it's more just like a, a successful role. I um, have an idea. Um, All right, I, fair enough. I'm going to go ahead and roll this for you. I don't want you to know what you got. Alrighty, because like it's like my thing is literally just a flat d in like d20, no bonuses. Because <laughs> like I have um, ten intelligence. You have a an inkling. That it it might be tied to the fact that you're a dampier, but you're you're not really sure. You 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 haven't really um, explored the breadth of of your draconic your draconic self just yet. But you do have an inkling it might be due to the fact that you have a vampiric influence. Hmm. My hair is like well, that's a bit fucking weird. Okay, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> like he, he begin, he'll stand up on the chair and he'll like try to start stretching. And he's like, "Oh Christ, I forgot, I forgot to take off me town show. 
as soon as I went to bed. And he's going to start unbuckling his poncho and kind of like put it on the chair he's sitting on and sit back down. And all of you notice that the markings on his chest, on his body. I can't describe them at the moment because um, it's a tattoo based off of on the char- the Skyrim version of my character. So whenever I have the photo, I'll put it down. Yeah, yeah, please feel free to do so. Whenever I have um, the chance. When, when, you, when you get the chance, yes, of course. Yeah. But he'll be sitting there and he'll be kind of stretching... And to when you look at his build, he's more his his body is built towards more agility than strength. So he, I, believe, I believe we would call that leith or life, L I T H E. Life, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like I would grab a photo of like a good like what it kind of looks like, but I would say good like similar fact similar would be like Balder from Go. Uh, God of War. Ooh, God of War 4? Yeah. How Balder looks in it. Like, how skinny he is, but not, like decently built. Mm-hmm. Noted. Actually, wait. Now I remember what the photo I chose was. Or what his build was. Let me quickly find it. But, um, yeah. You guys continue real quick. I'll search for this real quick. All right, what would the rest of the party like to do as you've finished your meal? I am walking outside to the stables and feeding my mount and check how is he in general. It looks like he was treated well. Um, He has been cordoned off away from the horses because they're a little spooked. Um, Mm -hmm. But he looks like he was well taken care of. He has his own trough of water. Um, loose bonds, uh, not, not, he's not, like, tightly chained up. Um, yeah, everything looks, looks proper. You may feed him, he... Okay, and after I finish his feeding him, I petting him on the neck and walk back to the party. All right. Zmi has left temporarily. Uh, he goes outside for a bit and then returns. Okay, I um, I found the photo that best represents his build. Um, as long as it is YouTube appropriate. It is YouTube appropriate. It's just, it's a photo I grabbed randomly off Pinterest. <laughs> okay. So it is just random art of an anime character, like anime-like character. <gasps> But that's kind of like what his build is. Like oh, okay. that's his build. So he's more yeah, he's on the skinny side, but decently built. Alright. Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> So Skylar, as the non GM uh de facto leader of the group for the moment, um where where would you like to start for this? investigation hmm you I perhaps think... seeking out some sort of I think uh... we should seek out a magical expert of some sort oh. that's gonna be you know I, me being a bard and us having like mostly barbarians and stuff I think we should we should search for someone that uh, has a better grasp on these sort of things so. Hmm, well, you do remember that there was a shack near the edge of the woods. Uh, it was named the Weeping Cauldron. Mm-hmm. There might be, um, there, there's probably somebody there who is adept at magic. <clears throat> it does seem like, yeah, I think that's where I would suggest we go. I mean, that's um, really uh, our only lead as of right now, unless you guys want to ask Profa for assistance, although I feel like that relationship may be a bit damaged at this point. I mean, they pro- so. she, she'll probably forgive the orc. <laughs> Not the orc, but you guys. Yeah, I believe yeah. she'll have a bit of more niceness towards like the rest of the party, but that orc... I feel like she's going to kill that orc. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So who did? 
Did you guys want to go talk to her before you guys, before you head into town? Um, yeah, let's do it. Um, All right. On the way, or I'm assuming we're leaving the inn, correct? Uh, well, if that is what you are, you, you're headed towards, sure. Because <clears throat> I, my brain's still a little bit hazy at the moment, but um, I'm a bit tired. But um, just if we are heading out of the building, I do want to quickly like strictly like stop by that quest board find like a bounty to like go hunt down somebody and kill them kind of quite kind of bounty mm. you say and this I anyone, like that or idea. is this just my character no. um it's me you also noticed the board um if you're interested in a bounty as well my character would just kind of be like, one, one moment, I am I need to go get me something real quick. And then he'll walk over to the board and grab the bounty off the wall. Grab a bounty off the wall. Just at random? Yeah. I also walk to the bounty board. Alright. Um, there uh-huh. is currently a bounty. Uh, there have been goblins that have been plaguing the streets nearby. Uh, you are there. There is being offered five gold per pair of goblin ears if you bring them back as proof. Sounds like an easy prey. Mm. Mm. Th- is this paper edible? I don't try suggesting eating goblins because, uh, uh, just from personal experience, I tried drinking the blood of one. It, it, it is nasty. <laughs> they, are, they are very much unkept. I see. I'm gonna look you and be like, for most people, no. I feel like you might be able to stomach it, though. Gideon will <laughs> look at Alu and he will say, perhaps some um, discussions of hmm, night life, as it were, and he looks around to see if it uh, should be kept in a private context. We wouldn't want. Um, well, I, I'm sure you know how the how the citizens of Faerun take, um, let's say, our uh, afflicted persons uh, in high contempt. Um, perhaps not mentioning the drinking of blood uh, in such a public place. Hmm. Well, I didn't just drink the blood. I did. I did take a chunk. Yeah. Out of them. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No. I. No. I. I. I understand. I'm just saying. Um, other people who over here might get the wrong idea, or the right idea. Over here. What's over Which here? Which would be even worse. Basically, he's he's giving you a small warning of, um. People don't like vampires, and if they hear about you drinking blood and they see that you're a pale elf, they might put two and two together. Yeah. Uh, I fucking guess. <laughs> he kind of like shrugs like he doesn't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> because he doesn't know what a vampire is. Ah. Well, that's okay. Hmm. He's not aware that he's okay. I did not realize that. D- d- he grew up in a gl- he grew up in a gladiatorial arena all his life. <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't ha- he didn't have much access to information. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> all right. So you grab a a bounty for goblins. Uh, they are located to the north. Um. They were last seen ju- uh, just uh, about a mile or two away from the town. And like I said, per pair of goblin ears, five gold. Um, they It does mention that if you bring back the head of the leader, there's an extra 30 gold in it. Well, all right. This is a nice one. And with almost like a sinister smile on his face. Oh, 
finally get to butcher something would be a bit of fun. But but after looking at that, he'll like fold it up and then put it in his um, bag, his little uh, side pouch. Can I eat that? No. And he walks off. <laughs> Let's go do it then. All right. So you head towards the north end of the town. You are passing by the Weeping Cauldron, which I believe Kai said he would like to uh, ask around about magically inclined persons. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally... I mean, the extent of my magic understanding is just what I've learned for the most part. And... As far as planar stuff goes, you know, even as far as that goes, I usually, you know, refer to you, you know, you being royalty and me not. <clears throat> so, let's go in. Let's see what, uh, unless anyone else has anywhere else that they wanted to check for. I... Go to the stables and mount up. I just follow whoever goes wherever. I don't even know how to go. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just like pouting and video like, I'm like, too stupid to do anything like at all. Alright. Um, so you enter the Weeping Cauldron. You are greeted by um, a small imp wearing a vest. He opens the door and he goes, Bing Chong! Can I also you enter end. the cauldron? But, yeah, I was assuming that you all were. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Zmi is over, uh, you said you were saddling up your, um, your, uh, your mount. Uh, yes. Iggy, yep. yes. You're, you, you, so you are getting Iggy prepared for travel. Uh, everyone else is assumedly at the Weeping Cauldron, correct? Yeah, yeah uh, my character will stay with the potter. He just needed to get a bounty on his hands. I'm, right. I'm, I'm pointing at the imp and I'm like, uh, what is this? He looks at you, he goes, Bing! Is that food? Bing! Does bong? anyone, does anyone uh, understand him? You're not there. Uh, I'm gonna use comprehend languages to speak with him. Uh, Bing bong. Okay. No, you t no. <laughs> no he's, just, he's just saying Bing bong. He's not. He's not speaking. But if you would like to use comprehend languages, uh, okay. Um, he hasn't said anything yet <laughs> outside of Bing bong. Yes, but what does Bing bong mean? Ooh. Um, you use comprehend languages, uh, it does not give you anything. It sounds like it is just an onomatopoeia that he is saying. Can I, can I, I, can I, can I, I, I nod, do, and I just say, can I say, say, per, play, can I say player versus, we'll do a player versus player against all players. Just one thing, please. For what? Say again? Can I do player versus player thing? It's not, nothing bad, but I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna try to convince them. That he's saying, eat me, I am food. Uh, you can make the case. There's not really a role that you're going to make. up. Player versus player interaction is not usually going to be handled by dice. Okay. I, I, I understand. Okay, this is, I understand his language. I know what he's saying. Uh, he's saying, I am food. Please eat me. No, he is not. Cox is yes, dead. He is. And he goes. <laughs> and uh, Skylar, you, did you actually cast Comprehend Languages? Yes, and I touched him. Okay. You, you hear him say, <laughs> For the love of the hells, please do not let him eat me. Uh. And yeah. the, the matron of the establishment will hurriedly walk up. Uh, she is a tall, uh, leaf, uh, drow woman looking to be uh, quite aged. 
Um, she's probably in her late hundreds. <clears throat> um, and she kind of ushers Bing Bong to the back. Uh, she says, she whispers something, but, um, <clears throat> well, the vampire has a, or the dampier has a 16 passive perception. Um, <clears throat> she whispers something in a language, wait, do you? Wait, hold on. I know common language elevation draconic. Dracon okay, no. That she whispers something uh to him in a language you do not understand. Mm. Alright. <laughs> okay, Draconic understand it, he's not paying attention to it. <laughs> Alright. Um, I noticed that nobody is uh taking charge, so I'm going to walk right up to her and be like, uh, hello. Oh, well, welcome, young one. What brings you to the Weeping Cauldron today? Perhaps looking for some magical assistance. Food. We sure are. Um, knowledge, mostly. Food only. You can ignore him. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So, um, kind of embarrassed to admit this, but, uh, what, I don't really know a whole lot about planar issues, and I'm not exactly sure where to turn. Hmm, planar issues? And her eyes, <clears throat> uh, Alu, you notice that she glances at something in, behind her desk. Uh, it appears to be an orb, uh, dark and swirling with some sort of energy. And she says, I, I know a bit about plane of travel, but, oh, my dear, this information does not come cheap. What is it that you wish to know? And perhaps we can bargain. Hmm. Well, my husband's kind of the expert on the political aspect, which it seems to be approaching. Gideon? You really going to make me can... converse two NPCs together? All right, fine. <laughs> You've been doing it already. Um, hmm. She says, uh, what is, um... And who's your husband? Is it the is it the lovely? Uh, oh, I believe you are a uh, a dampier. Mm. And she kind of smirks. And she My looks character. over to the barbarian, and she's like, uh, and she goes, um, probably not him. She sort of looks over to Gideon, and she's like, mm, perhaps, perhaps. Where who? <laughs> We, uh, I don't, I don't sell food, dearie. <gasps> that, that would be the, the restaurants across the way near the inn. My character's just like, as he's hearing the orc starting to get into his book again, my character's just gonna start slowly turning and looking up at the orc. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a slow as possible head turn. <laughs> No, it's like a Jason Voorhees top, like, his torso up turn. <laughs> um, she says, uh, ah, no ill will left for between, all right, well, it's not, not either of you. Um, must, must be the antler chap in the back. Uh, oh, what, what, what all do you need to know? And he says, um, yes, uh, uh, cr crown, uh, well, it doesn't matter. I, I, I require, uh, some assistance on, hmm, plain on matters regarding a potential conflict. And she says, hmm, sounds very important. Uh, what kind of conflict are we talking about? Who, 
Who would be the aggressor? And he says... He says, give the GM a minute to pull up the lore page that he has. Because he's got like 50 different pages open right now. I also forgot to mention when um, before <clears throat> our characters left the tavern, my character did get his poncho back on. <laughs> oh yeah, we kind of assumed that. Uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure just in case. <laughs> I didn't. So I'm going to say that you realize that you have not put it back on yet, which might be why the woman is uh, giving you the little bit of a, hmm, that's a little tasty. Like, <laughs> you're you're going to, okay, like, fine. And, 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 he look, and then he looks down. He's like, shit. He just yells, shit. He just goes, shit. And quickly, like, you see him. Almost in the blink of an eye, he's gone. And he's he's already gone back to the tavern. Quickly grabbed the poncho and came back. Because <laughs> my character oh, was he, he full actioned ran. Which yeah, she is 40, 45 plus forty five. So she looks out the door as you you run away, and she goes, mm, "Love to see him. Love to see him go." And then you come back with your poncho. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. She says, um... Can I eat it? Can, can you eat... Okay, the out of character. Can, oh, the poncho. You're talking to Alu, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, what? The poncho. Uh, Bolga, eat the poncho. You eat the poncho, my character will rip you in half. Hmm. You will get... To, you will understand why he's called the Butcher of the Veil. Motherfucker. <laughs> so do not eat his fucking poncho, or he will turn you into his new poncho. I see. Alright. She, uh... <clears throat> she and Gideon have a short discussion. Um, they are using big words in fancy language. Uh, you, you guys don't really... It's it's planar travel stuff. The word sigil is mentioned several times, but <laughs> there are just these terms and phrases that they're throwing out at each other that none of you have any idea what, like, like you know what the word means, but you don't understand the context at all. Johnny O'Malley is saying... Completely lost. It's like, it's like, it's it's like if you started listening to a physicist talk to another physicist and you're like well I know what an electron is yeah <laughs> so basically, you know, basically, basically my character's reaction to all everything <laughs> also um, to Johnny O'Malley asking if I would rip and have vertically or horizontally either or also Johnny O'Malley I think, it would saying... be, I think it would have been I think it would be funnier if you ripped him in half vertically you just grab both arms and pull, and he just snaps an half. Where is that quote from? I know English, Portuguese, as I keep Pashto, Mandarin, Navajo, Mosquito, Japanese, Gurangi, Klingon, Thangarian, Elvish, Floridian, and a whole bunch of other funny sounding words. Okay. Well, Zake over here knows like 50 languages, so. Yes. But that's why I play a dumb character, because. Ahab, because you friend. have three masters and are 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 a prodigy, yeah. <laughs> I want I want to be I want to feel dumb. <laughs> well, this is the game to do it in. Um. So they both turn to you all, uh, and she says, "All right, well, um, this young man." Uh, and he says, uh, uh, Prince, Ge I'm sorry, Gideon, you, you can just call me Gideon. She says, uh, Gideon here has up <clears throat> updated me on the uh, situation that you seem to be facing. Um, I would say that I have something that may help you. And you see her go to the back, and she'll open up a hatch 
and she begins to descend down the the ladder and closes the hatch behind her. <clears throat> if you do nothing, she returns in about 30 seconds uh, with what looks like a pendulum. <clears throat> she says, she says, this um, is a sort of um, guiding stone. Uh, she pulls out four vials. Each one, the glass itself is colored. Uh, there is a crystal inside each. Uh, there is a deep, dark blue um, mixed with uh, what looks like swirling waves of scion painted along the bottle. Right. The, as soon as I see this, I like... Oh, yeah, you know. You know. Widen. Yeah, you know. Jason um, Maxwell, Maxwell, my character would differ. Uh... Then the second bottle uh, is a deep purple, um, and across it is uh, silver lines that seem to swirl around the the uh, the bottle. Uh, the third is this dark red at the bottom. Or I'm sorry, <clears throat> how does that work? No. It is a bright, almost incandescent blue at the very bottom, and as it goes up, it spreads more into a red and then oranges and yellows. <clears throat> and there are sharp, jagged lines across the bottle. <clears throat> and the fourth is this <clears throat> gradient almost between gray, brown, and green with just a hint of light blue at the very top. <clears throat> she says, These can help guide you towards um, anomalies related to the inner planes. <clears throat> she says, um, this, this may be a bit expensive for your taste, but... I think we could work something out. Perhaps a deal of some sort? <clears throat> what sort of deal? He says, um... I... <clears throat> have something of a rivalry with, um... Another... Let's say, um... Almost a sister of mine. Oh. I would like you to perhaps relieve her of her mortal burdens. Oh, so eat. You know what I mean? Eat her? My character oh. just like well, in the background I mean, just I'm goes like opens his hand to kind of like show in the palm of his hand as like acid begins to like congeal around his hand and he just goes like oh it's all good with the bruise of the guy and or and then his hand turns to eye as his hand begins to freeze over or a more of a quick one <clears throat> oh dearie you think just the way i like it no i'd like it to be slow painful so eat she food i suppose if you wish to Dine, um, with her. Y you may, you may do so. I'm half to start calling our orc friend a Bosmer. <laughs> yeah, the amount he tries exactly. to eat and wants to eat people. Good what up? She says, "Um, I will give you the item if you come back with her head." My character yeah. goes, um after kind of, like, making the element that was appearing on his hand dissipate, he goes, like, well... And he starts, like, stretching a bit. Finally, something fun. Alright, um... Importantly, 
the only neutral, the only good aligned character is currently fixing up their steed during this conversation, which is quite the boon, um, because I have a feeling he might, uh, huh? Be obligated to speak up, yeah. He wouldn't be obligated, he's neutral good, so I, I assume if there was a good reason given, he might be okay with it? Maybe. Alright, well, I'm gonna ask her, well, um, how will we recognize her? I mean... Oh, deity, you just walk through the forest to the north, uh, well, you'll, you'll, you'll know who, you'll know who it is. Um, I believe she goes by Auntie. Hmm. A weird name to for a drow to call herself, but all right. Oh no, no, not a drow. No, 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 no. She's she's a more, more of a cousin to me. <clears throat> not not really a drow. Okay. I'm just gonna. So um, like... you're saying that uh, we perhaps have a deal, deities? Food. And yeah, if, uh, food, yes. And she kind of like looks over and she's like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? My character is like in the background, just like rubbing the bridge of his nose, just like, don't. don't. He's kind of doing the shaking head motion. You can just, you can, somebody can just feel him saying, just don't, just don't try to understand him. <laughs> don't. I'm going to use message to whisper to her. And she can whisper back if she wants, and, you know, I'm just gonna be like, he, he's pretty much just an idiot, and it really doesn't go any deeper than that. She, she, she her eyes dart to you for a moment, and she just nods. <laughs> so, deities, a deal? Ooh, yes. You have a deal. With, like, Ooh, a smile. Wonderful. And she she kind of flicks her fingers, and in front of her appears a pe piece of parchment. <clears throat> she says, I would just need each of you to sign this contract. All right. I'm um, half worried we shouldn't sign this now, because it appeared out of fucking nowhere. Um, um, I just keep the contract. Don't eat the contract. You, you eat the contract. I'm half ready for them Roll to just give you... Roll me a sleight of hand. All right, I'm, ro I'm rolling sleight of hand. Hold on, let me pull this up. Wait, does anyone in the room have a connection with divine magic? Um, I don't think so, but I mean... Because I know we have a uh, druid, oh, but... Oh, I, I actually do. Okay, I'm all excited on that. Because, okay. uh... like, if... Because I know we have a druid, but druids... It, it depends on the type of druid for them to be connected to a type of magic. Hmm. Connor's but... going to have to eat today. Effortlessly. Just as you... And and you're a tall guy, right? You, you're like, how how tall are you? Six foot five. Six foot five, so... <clears throat> This woman, this elderly woman, uh, Drow, is uh, probably about five foot five, five foot six. She effortlessly, just <clears throat> no wasted movement whatsoever, slightly turns and your hand swipes past it. <laughs> she says, no, 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 deity. The food is my cousin. This is to just make sure that we have a mutual agreement that neither of us will try to um, stiff the other. What is an agreement? Do I just draw here? You do thing I ask, and I give you shinies in return. Ooh, shinies. Yes. She looks over at Kai and is like, like, Gives you that look of like, oh my god, this guy's a fucking idiot, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, don't worry about it. <clears throat> so, who signs this contract? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. I don't see why not. 
just gonna shrug and be like, oh, "Well, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look to Gideon and uh, kind of like for approval." And like, if you don't, if he doesn't, he squints do his thing, eyes. He says, "Well, I, as a shrewd businesswoman, you of course are gonna allow us counsel on this contract, some time to read through it." And she says, "Oh, of course, Daddy, of course. Take all the time you need." And she will hand him the contract. At which point he will be immediately reading it. I will also uh, look at it and memorize the entire thing. I'll just go on set it and look my chops. Why did I ever even mention... Why did I let him mention Keen Mind? Keen Mind? This, is, this is... Oh my god. Okay, Skywolf, I will get you... Before the start of next week, a fully written out contract. You don't have to actually write it out. You do not have to write it out. We we can we can do this as it go as we go along, or generally specified. I am not going to lawyer this. Well, too late. You already you you said you memorize every bit of the contract. All right, well, okay. Well, we can do okay. If you want to make it really simple, you could be like. I, I can try to recall a certain point, and then we can define it. Every part of the contract. All right, you're the writer. <laughs> there. Uh, are we going to post this? In the, are we going to post a contract on the Discord or something? Yeah, no, I'll, you, you, I'll mock something up. You guys didn't get up. to memorize it. Crimes against GMs. Yeah, Jason, this is your fault, m mind you. <laughs> Um, okay, you memorize the contract, and Gideon reads through it, and he's like, well, there's some obvious loopholes here for you, and she said, oh, she kind of, she kind of, oh, you got me, daddy, I just want to make sure that you absolutely finish the contract, and that I don't, uh, get, you know, the wool pulled over my eyes, or something similar, you know, I have to have protections for myself. He says, um, he says, I think the disemboweling is a bit much. I was like, oh, was that applying and, to us? Um, he, uh, he, he points with his finger and scratches part of the contract, uh, from his fingertip, a small... A uh, spark of deep purple lightning just zaps through the page. Um, and then he starts writing some things in the margins. And uh, then he will hand it back to her and say, uh, How about this one? This seems a little more fair for both sides. He's going to roll a persuasion. Okay. She is going to contest it with an insight. Okay. Well. And she reads through it. All right. I think this is a fair trade-off. All right. And uh, he will uh, take the contract. And again, with that purple spark he signs his name and he will hand it to kai all right <clears throat> it's a little less exciting but sure all right, all right you signed sign the contract it. all right guardian or alu yeah do you sign it my character kind of, like, looks at it, and he's just, kind of shrugs, and he just, he, is there already something to write with? Because if there is, then he's going to bite his finger. <laughs> she has not provided you a writing utensil. <clears throat> I'm going to hand you a quill that has already, okay. ha already has ink in it. He's like, oh, okay, because I was about to write with my blood. <laughs> uh, that would be preferred, but um, not required. <laughs> he goes like, what? I just draw an X on this. My character just kind of goes, "What?" She. <laughs> that is that is a she valid signature. <laughs> uh, my character and instead of putting like Alu or Al 
Do it's I have to learn my location, new one? Like, I know. It's like, it's really stupid character. My character is just like, kind of just like, he's just, after hearing he goes like, what? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and he's, instead of writing Alu or Alu Carter, he's just going to put Butcher of the Veil. Diddy, you? Really? I wouldn't have guessed. Roll me um, an insight, Alu. Insight? I don't know. Okay, so I have a plus six to insight, so this should be fine. <laughs> Two? Oh, yeah, your wisdom's high. Which, by the way, also gives you good medicine roll. Yeah, he'll just like if you guys get poison, uh, if you guys get venom damage, he'll just uh, bite it and be like, mm, yeah, just, "This delicious venom." Yeah, suck it out like twenty five. Is, is the you can you what? realize that she knew who you were the moment she walked in that door. She is absolutely lying to you about not realizing that you were that. Absolutely, Wait, no question. She was, she was trying to pretend role. who I wasn't was? What? I, like, no one's paying attention. She, she, um... Basically, you get the feeling she knew exactly who you were. And she's just, like, pretending to be surprised. Oh. Well, I get, like, no one... It's never been pointed out, so I recognize my character, so I haven't been paying attention to it. Hmm. Um, she will look at the X that you have written. Um, she says, um, Diddy, you're either going to have to write your name or you're going to have to put something on it that uh, is uh, a, a part of you in a way. talking to you, Zake. Uh, what are you going to take? Um, yeah, we think it could be anything, really. Um, you could you could perhaps uh, sign in blood, or maybe maybe a fingernail or two. Uh, I can put it in this, and she pulls out a jar. Mm. A tooth. A tooth will work. You know, just, um, a, a bit of yourself. Does hair work? Hair? What are you saying? Hair. Hair? Hair? Yes. Um, yes, hair, hair will do nicely. All right, I take out part, part of my beard and just give it to her. <laughs> you just you can rip it out of your yes. face. And he's just bleeding out of the face. Uh, she, she, uh, wow. I'll eat that she, uh, 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 Oh, okay. She's like, she, she looks like she is regretting this decision. <clears throat> yeah, once this orc is level 20 and stuff, <laughs> the whole world is doomed. Uh, you you are you are you are shooting really for the stars if you think that this character is gonna last this long with the way you play it. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I, he's not going to last long, mate. If he, if he uh, does, that's like funny. this matter is gonna die. All right, all right, chat, uh, chat. How long do you predict this character will last? <laughs> fucking... By by the end of session two, you'll be dead. That's my bad. <laughs> and I'm not sure anyone wants to bring you back. That's the thing. Yeah, no, my character's already annoyed with you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you all have oh, signed. Yeah. Um. Q. Does your uh, does your lizard uh, lizard boy come back at this point? Um. I guess I have returned from the stables. All right. Uh, where are the where's our party now? They are at 
they're at the Weeping Cauldron. It is a sh- uh, a store that appears to be some sort of magic emporium at the edge of the forest. Well, I guess I park my Iggy and come in. All right. You can. As you walk in, you see us like signing a contract. How do you react? Hmm. Well, I don't think you would do something stupid. Like, I just walk to you. You just want to believe that you have the capacity for good. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just I was just wondering the reaction when he's better look at the bloody contract. So, Johnny O'Malley, that you want measurement of time, or are you t- he's asking round sessions? Uh, yes, we're asking rounds of the sessions. Well, <clears throat> she says. Oh, another companion of yours. Lovely, lovely. I was just speaking um, with the, your fellow deities over here. Um, they've agreed to help me, um, let's say, uh, deal with a problem I have. And uh, this is the contract that is just making sure that everybody involved has clear-cut rules. What have you got yourself into? <laughs> yeah uh, I mean the majority of the party has already signed you are only, the only person who has not yet signed this contract I guess I have to as well alright does, does he have to know I'm a character does he what does he have to sign I'm a character I'm not it's telling you that. <laughs> I'm not giving you a secret information, Zake. You're going to have to play the game and find out. Hmm. Maybe the contract is complete bollocks. And it doesn't do anything. Maybe it's just this regular old piece of paper. Well, if uh, the old placebo the contract. contract we're... <laughs> if we're going to die, let's die all together. Ooh, that's a good line. Bravo! Well said, dearie, well said. Yes, 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 yes. Just go north, you'll find her cabin. Well, her cabin will find you. Do you need anything before you go? I've got quite the collection. Um, My good thing. What do you think would help us? Oh, for, for your interplanar travels, well... Uh, it appears the Ergenassi already has a set of keys to the doors of Sigil. What is it? Quite no, an no, interesting no. little little trinket against... you carry there, young Gideon. Against. Oh, he against... eyes her. He eyes her real hard. He's squinting. He's giving her the look. Yeah. Well, I meant more against your sister. I mean, you are going to know her. Oh, cousin, please. Cousin. Okay. Mm, she's... Oh, she has quite the penchant for illusory magics. Uh, and deals in the trading industry, I suppose you would say. You know her. She will make herself known to you. Do not worry. Hmm. So, is there anything that might help us see the truth? Uh, can you... Do you want me to be more specific? I, I, I need you to be more specific here. I, I want to see something that... I want something that can maybe peer through an illusion or help me help me be less susceptible to illusion in general. She laughs. <clears throat> she says, Deity, unless you've got access to powerful artifacts, the eye of a devil, the eye of an archon, or perhaps a warlock of some sort, 
it's going to be quite expensive and quite rare to find something that allows you to true see. Well. Unfortunately, my wares do not extend to wondrous magics such as that. I see. So this task might be a little harder than originally thought. What do you mean? You just <clears throat> you just have to find an old lady and, you know, make sure she doesn't uh, muck up the rest of the forest as she has her little area. You're sending us after an old woman and recommending wondrous items? No, I didn't recommend any such thing. You asked if there was a way that you could true see. I merely answered your question. Yes, of course, but I don't have access to something like that. Why would you even need it? She's just some lady in the woods. She knows a bit of magic, but... Well, mostly, she's an environmental hazard. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's, she's, she's quite, uh... Quite frivolous in her, in her taking care of her plot of land and... It does appear to be taking a slight toll on the local wildlife. I simply... That are, that are more than just my rivalry for reasons why she, she needs to be... Uh, out of character, okay. this would have been such a big issue for one of my, like, druid characters that was very... Uh, environmentally, like, an environmental activist for the long. Yeah, like, I feel like that comment probably would resonate with Gideon a little bit. Gideon, he looks at her, he goes, bullshit. Boopy. And she just looks at him. He goes, uh -huh. he goes, listen, lady, we already signed your contract. You don't got to lie to us about what's going on with nature. I'm a friggin' druid. There ain't nothing about her that's doing an environmental impact. The wildlife's fine. And she kind of scowls. And she's like, look, the point is, she's dangerous. And she needs to go. If she hasn't mucked up the environment yet, she will. I promise you. Well, we did already sign the contract. No use arguing now, but... Let's go grab food. I guess so. Um, and then we're, I guess we're going to head out after that. Because <laughs> I don't think we need to... I didn't think we need to discuss anything else. I didn't... We can't Did discuss later. From her? Now we feast. All right. Um, All right. I think that might be a good point. Sure, we can we can uh, pause the pause session it. now at the beginning of your journey. Yeah, you have two yeah, quests means... available to you right now. There is a goblin threat to the north, as well as a woman who needs taking care of in the mm. north as well. If we got bitches to mur we got some goblin and a bitch to murder. That's one way to put it. That might have been too much. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you sure everybody for joining us. Yeah, thank you for being uh... well, Thanks for the consistent viewership. This is like a first. <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, so we will be back next week with an additional player who was not able to make it today. Um, and we will continue the, uh, quest of quenching the Crimson Pillar. Quest of, right. yes, and that's what I'm going to name it next. All right, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining. Also, just, um, Maxwell's, this sure is making that goblin job seem almost sane. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny as hell. All right. Thank you, guys. See you later. We'll see you.